mission is achieved and the work accomplished. When the vibration or note is perfectly felt or sounded it causes, at the point of synthesis with other vibrations, the utter shattering of the forms. Motion is characterized, as we know, by three qualities. 1. Inertia. 2. Mobility. 3. Rhythm. These three are experienced in just the above sequence and presuppose a period of slow activity, succeeded by one of extreme movement. This middle period produces incidentally, as the true note and rate is sought, cycles of chaos, of experiment, of experience and of comprehension. Following on these two degrees of motion, which are characteristic of the atom, man, of the heavenly man. 138 -E -E Four group, and with the logos or the totality comes a period of rhythm and of stabilization wherein the point of balance is achieved. By the force of balancing the pairs of opposites, and thus producing equilibrium, Kaliya is the inevitable sequence. C. By the severing of the physical from the subtler body on the inner planes, through the shattering of the web. This has a threefold effect. First. The life that had animated the physical form, both dense and etheric, and which had its starting point in the permanent atom and from men, pervaded the moving and the unmoving, in God, the heavenly man, and the human being, as well as in the atom of matter, is withdrawn entirely within the atom upon the plane of abstraction. This, plane of abstraction, is a different one for the entities involved. B, C, D. For the physical permanent atom, it is the atomic level. For man, it is the causal vehicle. For the heavenly man, it is the second plane of monotic life, his habitat. For the logos, it is the plane of body. All these mark the points for the disappearance of the unit into Perlaya. We need here to remember that it is always Pralaya when viewed from below. From the higher vision, that piece of color continuously overshadowing the dense moon in a physical manifestation, Pralaya is simply subjectivity, and is not that, it is not, but simply that which is esoteric. Second, the etheric double of a man, the sheep. When the cycle draws to a close, the experiment has been made, the objective a relative one from life to life and from incarnation to. Incarnation has been achieved, and there remains nothing more to desire. The ego, or the thinking entity, loses interest therefore in the form, and turns his attention inward. His polarization changes, and the physical is eventually dropped. 
the planetary logos likewise in his greater cycle, the synthesis of the aggregate of the tiny cycles of the cells of his body pursues the same course. He ceases to be attracted downward or outward, and turns his gaze within, he gathers inward the aggregate of the smaller lives within his body, the planet, and severs connection. Outer attraction ceases and all gravitates towards the center instead of scattering to the periphery of his body. In the system, the same process is followed by the solar logos. From his high place of abstraction, he ceases to be attracted by his body of manifestation. He withdraws his interest in the two pairs of opposites, the spirit and the matter of the vehicle, dissociate. With this dissociation the solar system, that, son of necessity, or of desire, ceases to be, and passes out of objective existence. Third, this leads finally, to the scattering of the atoms of the etheric body into their primordial condition. The subjective life, the synthesis of will and love taking active form, is withdrawn. The partnership is dissolved. The form then breaks up. The magnetism that has held it in coherent shape is no longer present, and dissipation is complete. Matter persists, but the form no longer persists. The work of the second logo then, and the divine. 132-A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E -E -E. Incarnation of the Sun is concluded. But the faculty or inherent quality of matter also persists. And at the end of each period of manifestation, matter though distributed again into its primal form, is active intelligent matter plus the gain of objectivity, and the increased radiator and latent activity which it has gained through experience. Let us illustrate. The matter of the solar system, when indifferentiated, was active intelligent matter, and that is all that can be predicated of it. This active intelligent matter was matter qualified by an earlier experience, and colored by an earlier incarnation. Now this matter is in form, the solar system is not in Pralaya. But in objectivity, this objectivity having in view the addition of another quality to the logoic content, that of love and wisdom. Therefore at the next solar pralaya, at the close of the 100 years of Brahma, the matter of the solar system will be colored by active intelligence and by active love. This means literally that the aggregate of solar atomic matter will eventually vibrate to another key than it did at the first dawn of manifestation. What can work this out in connection with the planetary logos and the human unit, for the analogy holds good. We have a correspondence on a tiny scale in the fact that each human life period sees a man taking a more evolved physical body of a greater responsiveness, tuned to a higher key, of more adequate refinement, and vibrating to a different measure. In these three thoughts lies much information, if they are carefully studied and logically extended. P. By the transmutation of the violet into the blue, this we cannot enlarge on. We simply make the statement, and leave its working out to those students whose karma permits and whose intuition suffices. E. By the withdrawal of the light, the form should gradually dissipate. The reflex action here is interesting to note, for the greater builders and devas who are that. T-H-E-T-H-E-R-I-C-V-O-V-Y-A-N-V-P-R-A-N-A-133 
active agents during manifestation, and who hold the form in coherent shape, transmuting, applying and circulating the pranic emanations, likewise lose their attraction to the matter of the form, and turn their attention elsewhere. On the path of outbreathing, whether human, planetary or logoic, these building devas are the same. Ray is the unit desiring manifestation, or on a complementary ray, are attracted by his will and desire, and perform their office of construction. On the path of inbreathing, whether human, planetary or logoic, they are no longer attracted, and the form begins to dissipate. They withdraw their interest in the forces likewise entities. Who are the agents of destruction, carry on their necessary work of breaking up the form. They scatter it as it is occultly expressed to the four winds of heaven, or to the regions of the four breaths, a fourfold separation and distribution. A hint is here given for careful consideration. Though no pictures have been drawn of deathbed scenes nor of the dramatic escape of the palpitating etheric body from the center in the head, as might have been anticipated, yet some of the rules and purposes governing this withdrawal have been mentioned. We have seen how the aim of each life, whether human, planetary or solar, should be the effecting and the carrying out of a definite purpose. This purpose is the development of a more adequate form for the use of the spirit, and when this purpose is achieved then the indweller turns his attention away, and the form disintegrates, having served his need. This is not always the case in every human life nor even in each planetary cycle. The mystery of the moon is the mystery of failure. This leads, when comprehended, to a life of dignity and offers an aim worthy of our best endeavor. When this angle of truth is universally recognized, as it will be when the intelligence of the race suffices, then evolution will proceed with certainty, and the failures be less numerous. Section 1. Division B. Body. 3. At the base of the spine. 11. The arousing of Kundalini. Very briefly, owing to the impossibility of revealing much on this necessarily dangerous subject, we will consider the subject of Kundalini and the spine. We must remember here that we are dealing with the etheric counterpart of the spine, and not with the bony structure which we call the spine or spinal column. This is a fact not sufficiently recognized by those who treat of the matter. Too much emphasis has been laid on the three spinal channels that compose the threefold spinal cord. These channels are important in connection with the Kundalini, the serpent power or mystic fire, it is called the serpentine or annular power on account of its spiral-like working or progress in the body of the ascetic developing the power in himself. It is an electric fiery occult, or phohatic power, the great pristine force which underlies all organic and inorganic matter. H. P. Blavatsky. 61 inches kundalini is the static form of the creative energy in bodies which are the source of all energies including prana. This word comes from the adjective kundalini, or, coiled. She is spoken of as, coiled, because she is sleeping, lies coiled, and because the nature of her power is spiraling. In other words, is that which, when it moves to manifest itself, appears as the universe. To say that it is, cold, is to say that it is in rest that is, in the form of static potential energy. Kundalini Shakti in individual bodies is power at rest, or the static center around which every form of existence, as moving
Lightning power revolves. Quote, the Serpent Power by Arthur Avalon. 134. Kundalini and the Spine 135. The Etheric Channel. Nervous system of the man, but in relation to the matter in hand, they are not primarily so important as the etheric channel, which is the unit enclosing these three. Therefore, we must strictly remember that we are dealing with A, B, C, the fire that passes up the channel. The conjunction of this fire with the radiatory energizing fire of the physical body at the point between the shoulder blades, P. Their united ascension into the head, E. Their blending eventually with the manasic fire which energizes the three head centers. I. Kundalini and the three triangles. The fire energizing the triangle in the head is the higher correspondence to the triangle of prana, midway in the body, and its lower reflection at the base of the spine. We have, therefore, in the human unit three important triangles. 1. A. B. C. 2. A. B. Centers. The pineal gland, the pituitary body, the alta major center, in the body, the triangle of prana, between the shoulders, above the diaphragm, the spleen, at the base of the spine, the three lower centers, a point at the bottom of the spinal column, P, and circa. The two major sex organs in the male and female point 62. 62 It is not my intention to lay any stress on the sex side of this subject, for these are organs with which the occultist has nothing to do. I will not therefore enumerate them in detail. I would only point out that in the transference of the fire at the base of the spine and the turning of its attention to the two higher triangles comes the redemption of man. 136-A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E-O-N-C-O-S-M-I-C-F-I-R-E -E -E The merging of the fires of matter and the fires of mind results in the energizing of the sumter or the atoms of the matter of the body. This is the secret of the immense staying power of the great thinkers and workers of the race. It results also in a tremendous stimulation of the three higher centers in the body, the head, the heart, the throat and in the electrification of this area of the body. These higher centers then form a field of attraction for the downflow of the third fire, that of spirit. The many petaled head center at the top of the head becomes exceedingly active. It is the synthetic head center, and the sum total of all the other centers. The stimulation of the centers throughout the body is paralleled or duplicated by the concurrent vivification of the many petaled lotus. It is the meeting place of the three fires, those of the body, of the mind, and of the spirit. The at one meant with the ego is completed when it is fully stimulated, and combustion then ensues, which is duplicated in the subtle of vehicles and causes the final consummation and the liberation of spirit. The merging of the fires of matter is a result of evolutionary growth, when left to the normal, full development of tiny lungs and brain. The junction of the two fires of matter is effected early in the history of man, and is the cause of the real health that the clean living, high-thinking man should normally enjoy. When? 
the fires of matter have passed united and still further along the etheric spinal channel they contact the fire of manas as one T radiates from the throat center. Clarity of thought is here essential, and it will be necessary to elucidate somewhat this rather abstruse subject. 1. A. B. C. The three major head centers, from the physical standpoint, are the Alta Center, Pineal Gland, Pituitary Body, 2. Kundalini and the Spine 137. They form a manasic triangle, after their juncture with the two fires of the two lower triangles, i.e., when they become synthetic. 3. A, B, C. But the purely manasic triangle prior to this merging is the throat center, the pineal gland, pituitary body. This is during the period when the human unit consciously aspires and throws his will on the side of evolution, thus making his life constructive. The other fire of matter, the dual fire, is attracted upward, and merges with the fire of mind through a junction effected at the Alta Major Center. This center is situated at the base of the skull, and there is a slight gap between this center and the point at which the fires of matter issue from the spinal channel. Part of the work the man who is developing thought power has to do, is to build a temporary channel in etheric matter to bridge the gap. This channel is the reflection in physical matter of the Antasperana 63 that the ego has to build in order to bridge the gap between the lower and higher mental, between the causal vehicle on the third subplane of the mental plane, and the manasic permanent atom on the first subplane. This is the work that all advanced thinkers are unconsciously doing now. When the gap is calm, 63. 1. The Master Soul is Alaya, the Universal Soul or Atma, each man having a ray of it in him and being supposed to be able to identify himself with and to merge himself into it. 2. Antaskarana is the Lower Manas, the path of communication or communion between the Personality and the Higher Manas or Human Soul. At death it is destroyed as a path or medium of communication, and its remains survive in a form as the common room of the shell. Voice of the Silence, page 71. The Antasperana is the imaginary path between the personal and the impersonal self, and is the highway of sensation. It is the battlefield for mastery over the personal self. It is the path of aspiration. On the goodness exists, the Antasperana persists. See voice of the silence, 50, 50, 55, 56, 88, 138, ATREATISE on cosmic fire. Eagle bridge, man's body becomes with the mental body and the fires of mind and of matter are blended. It completes the perfecting of the personality life, and as earlier said, this perfecting brings a man to the portal of initiation initiation being the field set upon accomplished work, it marks the end of one lesser cycle of development, and the beginning of the transference of the whole work to a still higher spiral. We must always bear in mind that the fires from the base of the spine and the splenic triangle are fires of matter. We must not lose this recollection nor get confused. They have no spiritual effect and concern themselves solely with the matter in which the centers of force are located. 
These centers of force are always directed by manas or mind, or by the conscious effort of the indwelling entity, but that entity is held back in the effects he seeks to achieve until the vehicles through which he is seeking expression, and their directing, energizing centers, make adequate response. Hence it is only in due course of evolution, and when the matter of these vehicles is energized sufficiently by its own laden fires that he can accomplish his long-held purpose. Hence again the need of the ascension of the fire of matter to its own place, and its resurrection from its long burial and seeming prostitution before it can be united with its father in heaven, the third Logos, who is the intelligence of matter itself, the correspondence, again, holds good. Even the atom of the physical plane has its goals, its initiations and its ultimate triumph. Other angles of this subject, such as the centers and their relationship to manas, the fire of spirit and manas, and the eventual blending of the three fires, will be dealt with in our next two main divisions. In this division we are confining ourselves to the study of matter and fire, and must not digress, our confusion will ensue. Kundalini and the spine 139. 2. The arousing of Kundalini. How this fire at the base of the spine can be aroused, the form its progression should take dependent upon the ray, the blending of the fire with pranic fire and their subsequent united progression, are things of the past with many, and fortunately for the race, the work was achieved without conscious effort. The second blending with the fire of manas has to be effected. Scarcely as yet have men succeeded in directing the fire up more than one channel of the threefold column, hence two-thirds of its effect in the majority is yet confined to the stimulation of the organs of race propagation. Only when the fire has circled unimpeded up another channel is the complete merging with the fire of manas effected, and only when it progresses geometrically up all the three with simultaneous action and at uniform vibration is the true Kundalini fire fully aroused, and therefore able to perform its work of cleansing through the burning of the confining web and of the separating particles. When this is accomplished the threefold channel becomes one channel. Hence the danger. No more can be imparted concerning this subject. He who directs his efforts to the control of the fires of matter, is with a dangerous certainty playing with a fire that may literally destroy him. He should not cast his eyes backwards but should lift them to the plane where dwells his immortal spirit, and then by self-discipline, mind control and a definite refining of his material bodies, whether subtle or physical, fit himself to be a vehicle for the divine birth, and participate in the first initiation. When the Christ child, as the Christian so beautifully expresses it, has been born in the cave of the heart, then that divine guest can consciously control the lower material bodies by means of consecrated mind. Only when Buddy has assumed an ever-increasing con. 140. A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E on Cosmic Fire. Control of the personality. Via the mental plane, hence the need of building the antasgarana, will the personality respond to that which is above, and the lower fires mount and blend with the two higher. Only when spirit, by the power of thought, controls the material vehicles, does the subjective life assume its rightful place, does that. God within shine and blaze forth till the form is lost from sight, and, the path of the just shine ever more and more until the day be with us. Section 1. Division E. 
M-O-T-I-O-N-O-N-T-H-E-P-H-Y-S-I-C-A-L-A-N-D-A-S-T-R-A-L plane. One. Preliminary remarks. One. The prequel goal. Two. The prequel function. Three. The prequel mode of activity. Two. The effects of rotary motion. One. Separation. Two. Momentum. Three. Friction. Four. Absorption. One hundred eleven. The qualities of rotary motion. One. Inertia. Two. Mobility. Three. Rhythm. IV. Rotary.